Hi, I'm Emma and I'm a textile artist based in Manchester. Um, I'm really interested in sculpture um, and sculpting with cloth in particular. Um, and I started a project with the Turnpike in 2019, uh, working with young people from Lee to explore the identity. Um, and we did that through a series of masks um, and also um, sort of interview questions, getting to know each other, um, sharing fears, um, kind of different, all our different aspects that make up who we are, um, and even people, um, sort of relationships, um, people were inspired by. Um, and on the first day of that project, so we had a series of different workshops, um, and I took in my mask, um, my baby lion here. Um, it's a sleeping lion, so I, I like that potential to come alive, like you're waiting to come alive, um, which you can feel like if you need to wear, a, you know, a brave face. You might not be feeling your best that day. Um, and so we had lots of different outcomes of brave faces. Some were inspired by parents and were a literal um, mask of a parent even. Um, and then we had other kind of spirit animals, um, unicorns. He is made from air drying clay, which I've painted over the top of. Um, and his mane's probably the most intricate part, um, which is made from thread wrapped matchsticks. Um, there's some buttons on there and like, bobbins, um, bobbins of thread. Um, sewing is a massive part of who I am. I, I studied um, embroidery at MMU. Recently after graduating, I got my first commission um, to make a child's garment in response to the Egyptian textile collection at the Whitworth Art Gallery um, and that project was called Tactile and then after that I got my first residency um, at Helmshaw Mills Textile Museum um, where I spent a year uh, making work in response to uh, the workers that once uh, worked at the cotton mill. And following that, I sort of started to go into social arts practice and making community works. Um, so I did the Great People's Poppy, um, which was made using lots of different contributions from people making knitted poppies. Um, and then things like workshop events um, where we'd make mass artworks, um, for example... Um, the construction piece as part of the Warp Festival. So we're making portraits of people that we love or miss, um, could be friends, family members. Um, so a portrait that you might want to gift them. Um, so this is Lewis, my nephew. Uh, I've not seen him since Christmas um, and he's made from plastic carrier bags um, he's also got uh, bottle caps for knees uh, bottle caps for feet uh, and the best part he's got a bottle cap bottom um, he's going to hate me for this uh, so when you're making your portrait, um, I'll take you through steps to best capture how you can make something look like fabric or make something look like a pair of jeans or so how you choose your carrier bag um, and how you manipulate the carrier bag. So we'll, we'll look at different um, little activities, short activities um, for you to have a go at starting to play um, and get a feel for the material. For this activity I'm using um, a stapler. This is my favourite tool um, because it looks the closest to stitch. Um, 
if you see around the edge. Um, and I just, that's what I love about it. It's quick to do, but it has that sort of same feel like it's gone in and out and in and out. Um, so stapler, if you've got one. Um, if not, glue's fine, just to glue the edges. Probably easier as well than a stapler, but I just like the effect of a stapler. So glue, um, a pair of scissors, um, definitely some plastic carrier bags. Um, and then that's about it. Um, what, what also could be useful is a pen or pencil and then any bits and bobs that you've got around the house that will help um, to make up your portrait. So extra things that I used were the plastic um, bottle cap lids. Um, I also used some drawing pins uh, for eyes. I'll just get Lewis back so you can see. So yeah, I used these drawing pins with a blob of black biro on to make the pupils other things you could use um around the house elastic bands um if a uh, paper clips are quite nice um these would make nice like trimmings on the edges of um or on the edges of your work or even to things that look like jewelry so, for instance, on that top, I might place um, a few paper clips around. So, there's just one, but you might continue to put them on around um, the opening of the shirt and give the idea of jewellery. Um, if the person you're making wears jewellery. Draw out your clothing shapes onto your chosen plastic bag. Um, you want to cut out a side for the front and a side for the back. So you need two pieces um, that are the same. Now you've cut out um, the shape of your clothing, you can staple the two pieces together and go around all of the edge with the stapler so that you can stuff it later on um, with another plastic bag. When you get to the face, you can either copy an image from your mobile phone, um, like I did with Lewis, or um, you can actually print um, the face, as I have here, and then use um, the different features as, as a template to cut around um, the plastic that you're working with. Um, so to make the body, um, you need to stuff these bits of clothing you've made to bring your character to life. Um, so I, you can get the really kind of thin bags or like see, they're almost slightly see-through if you hold them up to the light. And they're going to be, they're the best ones for stuffing because they're a little bit softer. Um, and the best for sort of making clothes are the more sturdier, harder wearing bags because they're going to last longer. Um, so to stuff with, go for those finer. I mean, feel them because that will give you an idea as well. Even they sound different, one's that's more rustly. So you'll know which feels best to use as stuffing. Stuff this in. So, you might need to get a pen or something that helps you to stuff down because it's quite narrow. All caps for knees. Um, to, because these are hollow, I've scrunched up paper and lots of glue 
and used some double-sided tape because I had just had some um so you could do something similar and just um so you get like a raised surface in order to stick it down or you could just tape it straight across if you've got some um see-through tape now i've got my bottle cap knees on i'm gonna use some elastic bands um which help give some definition to the joints um, so I put it round the top of the kneecap and cross it around the bottom, she says. So it gives more definition and more more of the appearance that there's a, a joint there in the knee. Um, so if you can see the difference, that's now got like a slight bend to it. Uh, and in the back, you'll be able to tell a bit more. Now I'm onto the tricky bit of attaching um, my two body halves together. Um, so what I'm using for that is some double-sided tape, which I've already stuck inside. Um, and I'll probably use a stapler as well, but you could use glue if you don't have double-sided tape or normal tape, um, whatever you can find to attach it together. So I want my t-shirt to sit over his pants. So I'm gonna try and make sure quite tricky that the t-shirt comes over it doesn't matter so much on the back but at the front that's how I want it to look and then I'll add a few more staplers just to hold that together but that's how he now looks I love using the stapler it's loads of fun Stapling, I think. I'm just making sure he's attached properly. I'm gonna put another staple just in in the corner of his trousers and where his hand and torso is meeting. Maybe. Sometimes it doesn't quite go in and you have to go again. But I think he's looking pretty good now. He just needs some shoes. To start with, it's a good idea um, to cut yourself a few different rectangles of, of plastic that you can just start to experiment with to see how you can manipulate them, all the things you can think of to do. Um, so that could be twisting, it could be cutting into strips, um, which I did for the hair. Uh, it could be pleating is a good one. So pleating is good for where there's a gather um, in your clothing. So uh, on Lewis here, I did some pleating around the bottom of his jogging bottoms. Um, but other areas, it could be good for hips, um, it could be good for collars. Um, so to gather, um, you kind of make some small folds in your plastic. And you kind of keep pleating it. So you're kind of constantly adding more pleats. Can you see that? Um, so yeah, just keep practicing at different, see what different things you can do with it and how you can see that transferring into making clothes or features. Um, and then I just staple that in. And that became the sort of bottom of my pants then. 
Um, so these little details make a, a big difference um, when you're working with such a difficult material. Um, it just adds um, a bit more uh, to look like what it's supposed to look like. When it comes to selecting um, your carrier bag, um, you're constantly thinking about trying to get a feel for the person that you're creating or um, parts of the identity and character, trying to get that across. Um, so for instance, colour is important. Um, so I managed to find an orange um, carrier bag, um, which is Lewis's favourite colour. So thinking about things like that, um, how you can bring in aspects of their identity um, into the materials or the colour you're selecting, um, or things that you recognise about the person you're making. So my nephew always wears jogging bottoms um, and I've, I've done the free stripe um, so details are quite important and also you can change um, the body language um, of the person. So if you see them a lot with the sort of arms crossed, you could tie those two bits together. Um, so think about gestures the person makes as well. This year I've made a daddy doll, which I'm currently still making. Um, I lost my dad earlier last year, um, just before the first lockdown, um, which was a bit of a shock. Um, and making really helps me um, to come to terms with strong emotions, I guess, but also helps me to find the joy in in something that can be quite traumatic. I always believe there is still something joyful left. And um, I hope Daddy Doll, and, and my work in general makes people smile. Um, so I've made him with pistachio nuts, which are my dad's favorite nuts. Uh, he's got embroidered cheeks um, that have been padded out with felt. Um, and mouth and his eyes have been beaded with glass beads so I've made him in a similar way to how we are making our portraits but he's um, mostly made out of fabrics um, so fabrics that belong to my dad so I've used his shirts um, I've used his work trousers and um, I've used his high vis because my dad um, worked as a joiner, so he offered him more high vis. Um, I can show you that. Uh, so that's his high vis. Um, I've got the Lancashire rose embroidered in. Uh, I'm originally from Lancashire, and my dad's from Lancashire. Um, and he always wore this symbol on his motorcycle hat because he was a racer. Um, and then other kind of like construction signs. And then on the back, I've embroidered um, his green Vauxhall that he had. We had the same car. Um, slightly embarrassing. His was an older version of mine, which is quite funny. Um, and then that's his blue work van, his old work van. Um, he'd sometimes give me a lift the train station if you're lucky you get lifts too um and then i saw to represent the fact he was a joiner i probably need a hammer somewhere spanner um and just other symbols um that remind me of him because uh, he worked all his life um so he's a working class man and it was important that i um celebrated what I consider sort of ordinary people just doing it earn a living. Um, and then his body, whack myself in the face, uh, is here. So I've got to just put all, him all together. So as you can see, it's, it's very similar to what we're doing, but just using uh, different materials. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this activity. Um, so thank you. Um, 
and it's made me think more of my nephews um, and I'm going to enjoy posting the portraits to them. Um, so I hope you enjoy the activity um, and take care.